Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about JavaScript intro. But before I show you the demo, I would like to a little bit talk about why do we have to take this extra step in order to use JavaScript functionality in our Blazor app. So this is our hosting model. What we do, we write HTML and C-sharp code in our Razor component here. And we have .NET runtime setting on, uh, on our server, which renders our Razor components and pushes the pages on the browser. And there's a signal connection with DOM, which lets us perform operations on the browser. But the problem with this model is JavaScript is setting on the browser and uses V8 engine to perform operations. In order to use JavaScript functionality, what we need to do is we need to inject JavaScript runtime in our Razor components. So let's see how we can do that. To inject JavaScript runtime in our Razor component, the only thing that you have to do is you just say inject ijs runtime js runtime in our razor component and that's the only thing that you can do to enable your razor component to perform javascript operations so let's call some javascript function here what i'm going to do is on save click i want to show an alert message which says that okay the record has been saved successfully i have created a um, javascript file here in my root folder and it has a function which is say, which has saved message and it calls an alert uh, saying that record has been saved successfully. And so first thing that we have to do is we have to add this JavaScript file in our application. To do that, I'm gonna go to my uh, host.cshtml and say that let's add this JavaScript file, um, JavaScript file in our application sweet and to call this function what we need to do is we'll go to our save author function and here i'm gonna say js runtime and invoke an async function a void async function because we do not it does not have any return type and this will take an identifier which is the name of our method our javascript method Nice. But this function is an async function, so I'll have to put an await keyword in front of it and uh, convert my function to an async function here. Nice. Let's, uh, and before I run this, what I would like to do is I would like to get rid of this validation support for my edit form so that it gets easier to test. And I'm gonna say Bill Gates is my new author. And when I click on save, boom, you can see that it's showing an alert message here. Now, wh what I would like to do is I would like to pass parameters. Instead of showing records here, I would like to say Bill Gates has been saved in my database. So to do that, we can go to our save message here and say that our save message takes some parameter it takes first name and it takes last name it takes last name and instead of showing records here i would like to show first name and add some space and show last and show last name and uh, we'll show bill gates has been saved successfully nice and to pass parameters what we should do we should go we should take this uh, take the first name and last name from the uh, first name and last name from the from author here first name and we should take last name from author nice and pass these parameters in this invoke async call so to do that and it takes any number of parameters here it's it does not uh, limit you to a uh, few parameters and these parameters should be sequential so first it takes uh, first name and then it takes last name nice let's run this and see if this works i'm gonna say bill gates is my new author and when i save it Boom, you can see Bill Gates has been saved successfully in my database or anywhere in the system. 
Nice. But you can sh show alerts, right? And that's, and that's pretty simple. Uh, one, what I would like to do is I would like to control a DOM object using my JavaScript function. So instead of showing an alert, what I would like to do is I would like to show a message on top saying that the record has been saved successfully. So to do that, first thing I'm gonna create a div here. I'm gonna say this is a div and the ID of this div is div server validations. Uh, that makes sense, right? Because <coughs> we were showing client validations here and this is for server validation. And I'm gonna say that this, just make it look prettier. It's an alert and it's an alert of type info. Nice. And to set values to our dev, what we can do is we can, instead of calling alert, instead of calling alert, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get element by ID and um, get that div from here and put it here and set inner text to whatever message that we were showing on our alert. Sweet. Nice. Let's run this and see if this works. So I'm gonna say Bill Gates and go and save. Boom, there you go. You can see message on our top. Uh, see, uh, you can get elements you can get elements by its ID, but you can also pass the reference still. And then you have more power to manipulate those controls. So what I would like to do is when I am done, when I click on save or hit enter on save, I want my cursor, my focus to go on the first text box that, so that I don't have to use mouse every time to go to first name and then save again, right? So to get the focus after save, first we need to go to our input text here and set a reference. Set a reference. Say that this is a first, uh, first name text. First name text. And we'll have to create an element reference for this. So I'm gonna create an element reference of the same name of the same name same name okay let's build this and see what happens so when i build it it says that you cannot implicitly convert the component into element reference the reason why we are getting this error is because we are trying to refer a razor component as an html control you can only refer HTML control. You can only pass HTML controls to JavaScript, right? JavaScript is not gonna know what razor components are, right? So let's convert our, uh, our razor component to an HTML control here. And I'll have to make a few changes here. Okay, nice. And now we can pass this element, element reference in our JavaScript function to get its focus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call await js runtime and also invoke a void function and here i'm gonna say set focus focus on element i have not created this function now i'll create it and i'll pass the element so what i'm doing here is i'm passing a html control reference to a javascript function here which is not created yet so let's just go ahead and create that function i'm gonna say function this and it takes a, a HTML element and we would like to focus we like to focus on this element whenever this function gets called right let's run this and see how this works so I'm gonna now, now I'm not gonna use the mouse I'm gonna say bill gates hit save boom there you go steve jobs hit save mark zuckerberg boom there you go 
So that's how you can, you know, have productivity when someone is trying to enter some details on your form. You don't have to use mouse now. And that's how you can uh, have more controls on your con HTML controls on your page. Okay, so these, these are the things that you can do with uh, JavaScript and Draw. Last but not the least, uh, let's say I have an API which pulls cities. Uh, I have a JavaScript function which pulls cities from an API. And I do not want to show a text box. I don't want to let user enter anything. I want to show a drop down which lists out all the cities that I'm pulling from an API. And this JavaScript function is from my old project. I want to use it, right? So let's say I have this get cities function. Get cities function. It's a JavaScript function. It, it pulls all the biggest cities in America from an API and returns it. And I want to use this, use this function. We have been sending parameters to our JavaScript, but what if we get data from our JavaScript and we want to use this, use this data in, uh, in a razor component. <clears throat> so first thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a property in which I'm going to, um, get these, um, get the cities. And to load the cities, the best event, the best time to load this event is protected. There is an overridden uh, abstract function that I'm going to override. It's called as after on and on after render async. And this function gets called after render has been completed. And this function is an async function, so I'm going to uh, make it async and uh, save task and now I would like to get cities from my JavaScript function so I'm going to say if if it's a first render if it's a first render then call a JavaScript runtime JavaScript function and this time I'm going to return I'm going to get some data which is string array from my JavaScript function and we can just call, we can pass the name of our JavaScript function and pass it. And this is an async function. So I'm going to get it. I'm going to put the await keyword and I'm going to assign the cities here. Okay. The only problem here is that, uh, you know, this is an async function. So when I call this function, this is gonna go and get get cities and assign the cities, but it's not gonna uh, it's not gonna update the UI. So what I would like to do is I would like to keep on calling this function until I get cities in my cities variable here. And I'm gonna say state has changed, right? And instead of showing instead of showing a text box, what I would like to do is. I would like to show a drop down. I would like to show a drop down here. Sweet. Let's run this and see if this works. Boom. There you go. Now I can call a JavaScript function, which is connected to an API and which pulling information. And now I'm able to use my old JavaScript function in my new Blazor app. So yeah, this is all you can do with JavaScript interrupt. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section. This is Fahad. Thanks for watching. Bye.